Well, the Christmas holiday is almost here. So it's time to go into your attics and closets and pull out all of those Christmas decorations. In the process of doing that in our house, we found that our train platform is in need of a whole lot of repair. So we decided instead of making another rectangle one that sits on the ground with the tree on top, we decided to go ahead and make it 18 inches off the ground with a round top with the round track. And then the tree will sit right on top in the middle. So come join us for a few minutes and we'll show you how we do it. First, center and attach your plunge router to your piece of scrap wood. Go ahead and make your hole. Then turn your piece on its side and make a mark at the edge of the hole. Measure over 20 inches and make a mark. Square it up, then transfer that mark to the side and then to the top. And then make a center mark on that line with the wood. Hammer in an eight penny finish nail. Don't have to stick out too far, maybe a quarter of an inch. Attach your piece of wood to your workbench. Hammer another eight penny finish nail into the center of your project. Line up your eight penny finish nail with that new hole. Hammer that down pretty secure, and then give it a little test. There we go. When routering on the outside of something, always make sure you go counterclockwise. Remove your jig, and then just sand your corners so nobody gets a splinter. So there's a trick on how to make a perfect circle. Figure out your center point, measure out your radius, go ahead and cut that out, and double your radius equals your diameter, which in this case is 40 inches. This marking gauge, set at two inches, will scribe the inside of the circle, and that'll give us a reference point for the outside dimension of our square base. Let's go ahead and do that. Now with a framing square, draw a perfect 90 degree X off of the center. Then, box out that square where the X meets the scribe. When measuring where the X meets the scribe, we came up with 25 and a half inches. So I just got a call from the boss, and it turns out we're going to change the height of the overall tree platform. Before we had it at 19 and an eighth, which was 18 inches plus 3 quarter for the top, plus 3 eighths for the feet. Now she wants an overall 13 inches, so we take 13 inches minus 3 quarter for the top, that's 12 and a quarter, minus 3 eighths for your feet, and that gives you down to 11 and 7 eighths. So we're going to go ahead and rip the pieces that we already cut down to 11 and 7 eighths. So now all the pieces are cut to 11 and 7 eighths for our height. Now let's go ahead and cut two pieces at 25 and a half, which will give us our end caps for our base. It's now time for some mathematics. We cut the two pieces for the base at 25 and a half inches. Now the other opposing pieces are going to be on the inside, so we want to subtract 3 quarter and 3 quarter, which is the width of your plywood, and that's an inch and a half minus 25 and a half, and that's 24 inches. Bear with me. Now take the 24 inches and cut that in half, and you have 12 inches. So what we want to do out of our 11 and 7 eighths stock is cut four pieces at 12 inches, and I'll show you how that's going to work. Next, let's focus on the front and back panel of our base. We're going to go ahead and wrap the perimeter of one of the pieces with 1x3. That'll give us a guide to go by with our above bearing router bit to router out the inside for an access panel. Screw your piece down, nice and secure. Grab your plunge router and get ready to do a clockwise cut. Now, use that piece as a template for the other panel. Okay, now we have the front and back of our base for the tree stand, and it's got the access panels for wiring or whatever we choose to do so in the future. So now the other two sides are going to be two pieces each. I'm going to put those two pieces together, and then with a the butt hinge, we're going to just center that butt hinge on the seam of these two pieces and put it in with some screws. Now, I'm using longer screws. Number one, I don't have shorter screws. Number two, they're drywall screws. And the long drywall screws are a piece of cake. You just drill it in and then grab your hammer and tap it off on the other side. And I'll show you how we do that in a minute.
To get the hinges set, I usually just put a couple screws in to get started. But then I go back and actually fill all the holes. With that same panel, flip it over and now put four hinges, two top and bottom on each side and have the barrel of the hinge flush with the edge of the panel. All right, now that we have all of our hinges in place on the side foldable panels, let's go ahead and put this bad boy together. What I'm gonna do is kind of cheat. You know, since it's not a finished product and nobody's gonna really see what's going on down here, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a screw in the side, temporarily, to make it easier to screw this hinge together. Well, there you go. Here is your collapsible stand with access panels for your Christmas tree platform. And of course, there's your top. So what I did is got two 24 inch long 1x3s and those are going to mount to the underside of the top and those will act as a stiffener for the foldable base. Well there you go. The top is now secure to our foldable base. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a nice little finish on the front all the way around. And I'm going to use bender board, also known as wiggle wood. And I'm going to put a bead of glue on the top of this, come around with my nail gun, and nail it in. And don't forget, have a wet rag standing by to clean up that excess glue. Before you glue it, go ahead and give it a dry fit. So there you go, that bender board gives this a finished look. Now I had the extra material and the glue and the time, so I want to do a second layer of the bender board just to give it added support. When doing a second layer of bender board, make sure you stagger your seams. When doing a project like this, it's always great to sand down those corners to help avoid splinters. So next we're going to go ahead and grab our grass mat that we bought from a local hobby store. And we're going to place this on there. It's not big enough to cover the whole thing, so we're going to have to piece that in. Not a big deal. But we'll start with the front part, so we have a nice front area to look at. What we're going to do is pull this off here, and grab some wood glue, mix it with some water, and then go ahead and put an even paste on here, get the grass mat, put it on where we like it, and then go ahead and scrub the outside to make it fit. So this is a fun part. You get to go ahead and mix some glue and water and spread it all over the place. Pour it on top, grab yourself an old brush, and just kind of spread it out. Like I said, making a nice even paste. With your grass mat, go ahead and square it up with the outside of your radius. Then grab a couple extra scrap pieces of plywood and some weight and put it on top to hold it in place. After it dries for maybe 10-15 minutes, come back with your sharp razor blade and go ahead and score the outside radius. 
Come back with your dry roller and roll it out. Now with this piece, you're going to use a remnant that you had left over. The best bet is to use a factory to factory edge. That way you get a nice clean cut. And again, if you can, use whatever type of weight you have to hold it in place while you trim the outside radius, roll it down, and let it dry. And of course, weight is always your best bet. Now just go ahead and make sure you have the same distance from the outside of your track to the outside of your platform, and then nail it down. Now with older track, make sure that you grab some 220 sandpaper and just sand the top two rails of the track all the way around. Well there you go, the training platform is built. Let's go ahead and take it upstairs, put the new Christmas tree on top, and see how it looks. Well, I hope you have fun building this, because I know I did. This is for big kids and small life. So I'd like to wish you and your family a very happy holiday, and God bless.